Sometimes you want to change the file system on a Linux system, Linux machine. So let's take a look at that. I have a Linux machine right here. I have a mounted file system. The mount, I can see that I have this device storage or this mount point storage, which has a ext3 file system. And I want to convert it to something else. So there are a couple of steps I need to go through. First of all, when you reformat a file system, all the data in it is essentially lost. And if you don't want to lose it, then you want to back it up. If you don't mind losing it, then you're probably okay. So let's go ahead and back it up first. So I'm not in that file system. Go down to the slash directory at my side of the file system. I can take a look around. I can see that the storage mount point is right here. I can look inside. And I can see that there are files in this storage place. Okay, now I want to go ahead and back up this data. I could copy it to a different directory. That would work. I can also create archives. So the tar command is great for creating archives. I can use tar c for create v for verbose file and Z for compression. And I want to compress these files. So I want to create a new archive. So I'll call it, it's right here in my slash directory, but I'll put a leading slash anyway. So I'll call it storage.tar.gz. So we're using the Z compression, which creates a GZ file. And the tar command creates a tar file. All right. Sometimes you'll see people write uh, TGZ and other things like that, but that's the extension. All right, so I'm creating that, and the, where I'm getting the data from is the storage directory. So I run this command right here, and it generates this tar file. All right, now I could also use tar and use different compressions. Sometimes people use, like to use the BZ2 compression. So if you wanted to use that instead, not in addition, but instead, use tar, and you create again, and you want to do verbose again, and you want some of the options to come with the BZ, so use JP and uh, put an F here for the file again. And once again, I'm grabbing the data from the storage. I want to put in a storage, storage.tar.bz2. And it's the storage directory. So I run this again. And now I've created two different archive files. So I can take a look at this directory. I can see I have a storage.tar.bz2 and a storage.tar.gz. You can see that the GZ is currently compressing smaller than the BZ2. Sometimes BZ2 is smaller. Sometimes GZ is smaller. It doesn't really matter. They both the same data. And so you can use that. All right. Now it's backed up. We're, we're safe. We actually have two backups, but we're safe, and we can go ahead and move on. So you want to unmount it first. Unmount with the umount command, storage. Once it's unmounted, you have to remember what device it was. So this was dev SDA5. You can also sometimes use BLK ID, and that will tell you information about which devices you have. I can see that mine's a SDA5 device for storage. And now I want to format it. So you can use the mkfs command. There's a uh, multiple options. If we press tab a couple times, you'll see what your options are. I can use these different file systems to format it. So normally um, you want to use something like ext4 or xfs, or you want to install additional file systems and use those. So I'm going to install this one or format this one as the XFS file format. So my two options are I can either use mkfs.xfs like this and pass it the type, actually not the type, um, pass it the device dev sda5. Because it's already formatted as a device, it will throw an error and it says it needs to be you need to pass the force option in order to format it. So I'll pass it the force option. 
and then it will format it as EAG or XFS. If you see it looking like this, this kind of gives you an idea that okay, it has formatted correctly. If you want to, you can also use the MKFS front end, use the minus T for XFS and uh, SDA5 as well. This thing right here will just tell it to run the mkfs.xfs program. For run this again, once again, it requires the minus F option. So I have to pass in some kind of minus F here in the right place. And that was the wrong place. Let's put it over right here. And then it'll format it. All right. So once we have this ready, we are... We have it formatted, we can go ahead and prepare to mount it. So the FS tab file contains information about mounting file systems. So I do a nano on the ETC FS tab file. And you can see that there is this device and it was being passed in by the UUID before and it was a EXT3. So we want to verify the UUID is the same before we try doing anything. So you can type in BLK ID and you can see that the UID has in fact changed. It's now this. So I can go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna go ahead and edit this FS tab file. Change the UID right here to the new UID. And change what it mounts as to XFS. Then exit out and I can mount it now. Mount storage. And it mounts correctly. You can type in the mount command and you can verify that it is in fact mounted. Now once we have it mounted it's time to restore the files that we well we backed up. So I take a look at the storage directory and we see the storage directory is empty. Fortunately, I can go to the storage directory right here and um, decompress stuff in here or I can go down to the slash directory and because it's mounted right now, you can see once again it's mounted, it's mounted right now, I can use the tar and the new XFS um, and normally the tar will be able to figure out based on the extension and the information in it what kind of file to extract and it can just extract the data right here. So if I do storage dot tar dot gz it should be able to just extract the data. I don't need to use that. I should pass in the z flag right here but if I skip it it still decompresses it, throws it in there and you're good to go. You could also do uh, um, try it with the BZ, BZ2. Of course, the file is already there, and so it might do some weird, and, but it didn't seem to do anything weird. You can look in the storage directory, storage, and you can see all the files there. And that's all you need to do.